Bonjour à tous. Um, last week, I told to my son I was going to give a TED talk, and he was extremely, ex extremely um, impressed. He said, "What? You're going to give a TED talk?" And I said, "Oh yes." Then he said, "Oh, you know what? You're in a big trouble." Oh yeah, why? You know, you have to be funny. Then I thought, yes, I am in trouble. And then he says, you know what? I think you should drink before you go there. You drink, you drink a lot. Oh, really? You think it's good to be hydrated? No, 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 not hydrated. You need to, be, to drink alcohol. Really? Yeah, it's only when you're drunk that you're funny. So I'm going to tell you I'm not drunk, and I don't want to be funny today, because I want to talk about something that is very serious, and I want to share with you. I am a doctor. I am an eye doctor. I was born to be a doctor, like some people are born to become artists, and some others maybe are born to be politicians. And since I am a very long, a little girl, I had this dream that one day I would be able to relieve pain, to cure, and maybe to eradicate diseases. And it took me a couple of years to get there, working hard. And then it comes the time when you go to medical uh, school and then you see patients. You go in oncology, you go in neurology, you go in emergency. But then you come from the clouds into reality. I was in front of this patient. She was complaining of photophobia, which means that she's feeling too much light coming into her eyes. I examined her. I was young. I did not see much. I took her to my senior doctor. He examined her again, he made some exams, and then he said, we have to bring her to professor. Well, I thought, that's not good. And then she sat down in front of the professor, he looked at all the exams, and very seriously, he said, you're very lucky, you came so early, because you will have time to learn Braille. It took me like two hours. This poor girl, her life is suddenly changed. She's going to become blind, be in the dark. I was trying to give her some help, not even understanding what was going on. And when she left, I went to the professor and I said, what is going on? And he said, she has retinal degeneration. And what can we do? Let her go blind. Then you feel this kind of hang anger. You are just powerless. You have not done all this work. Being there to just see your patients die, See your patients become blind? Then I said, maybe I'm not in the right place. I should do something else. That's not for me. But I am persistent. And then I said, if there is no treatment, maybe we can help and find some new treatments. And I went back to the research. I decided to make a master in biology, then a PhD in biology. And it took me a couple of years to get there. Going back from the lab to the clinic, to the clinic from the lab in the night, in the weekends, in the holidays, stealing time to my family, to my kids. But finally, I get there. And then you have to go back to the clinic. I am a doctor. But you know, at that time, a long time ago, no position for people like you. You have to choose. Either you are a doctor or you are a researcher. But I found a few people in my way, and these people helped me. And going back from the clinic to the lab, once I saw a patient, he had lost one eye. His single eye, he had a graft rejection. A graft is that you take a cornea from a donor and you put it in the eye of another person. And he was in having a rejection. In this case, what you have to do is give high dose of steroids to the patient. And I did it. And the eye went well, and he recovered his vision. Unfortunately, he got a severe psych psychiatric side effects. He was sent to emergency and then spent a year in psychiatric hospital. And then this poor guy had recovered his vision, but his life was ruined. He has lost his job, had lost his wife, but his eye was okay. And then I thought, maybe we could find a way, instead of giving such high dose intravenously, for just the eye, to find a way to deliver the drug simply into the eye, using drug delivery systems. And this is what I did. And the nice thing about science is that you can find people all around the world that are able to work with you. 
and through an international collaboration, we succeed to develop a system that was a very small device in a few seconds allowed to have the treatment go into the eye without having this steroid exposure. And this patient, believe it or not, he had another graft rejection, and he came in and we treated him in a clinical trial with this treatment, and he went well. And at this time, he realized, after having been doing so much work, going back from the observation to the lab, make it work in animals, then back to the patient, you have achieved something. For this single patient, all this, it was worth it. And what were we doing at that time? Like you heard previously, we were doing translational research. It's a new word, but everybody was doing translational research. We were observing something in the clinic, we were going back to the lab, and we were going back to the clinic. But what does it mean? Translation means being able to translate one language to the other, go from one world to the other, make them communicate. It means push something from one plan forward to the other plan, from one universe to the other. But most of it, translation means go from the mRNA to the protein. Make something that is the potentiality to become a reality with a function. And at that time, you say, well, that's nice, but I would like this treatment to be used by others. And here you find yourself in the desert. How are you going to make this work? And you have several things to do. First of all, you have to make a patent. Then you have to publish. We need to make it know it is working. Believe it or not, we are in a strange system, and you all know this. If you are developing a phone and you work for Apple and you have a good idea, do you think you're going to ask Samsung if this is a good idea? But this is what we are doing. We are sending our ideas and our research to editors that are looking for experts. But these experts, if they are experts, either they are your friends and they cannot review your papers because they are biased, or they are your enemies, they are biased, or they are your competitors, they are biased. We are spending all our lives trying and find ways not to bias our experiments, but the way our papers and our work is judged is multi-biased. And this is how it is. And part of this work has never been published. And then the third thing is that you have to find money. But it's not the kind of money you can find in government. It's not the kind of money you can find in grants. No, 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 no. Here we come to tens of millions. We have not been trained to find tens of millions. How do you do that? And so you look at different opportunities. You have pharmaceutical companies. Maybe they can help you. You have something that works in animals, that works in patients, for graft rejection, and that could be used for a lot of patients. It's sure they're going to take it. But believe me, believe me or not, yes, they find this very good. This is perfect. But what is the market? The market, a few tens, thousands of people per year, no market, go away. So then you say, okay, you know, I am persistent. I'm going to find another way. I'm going to make a startup company. And you hear that there are people called venture capitalists. These people, they have a lot of money and they are ready to help you, believe it or not. And so I did it. I believe they, are they were going to help me. And they put this money in the company. And then begins another story. Why? Because these people, they want quick money back. Big and quick money back. First of all, it's not the same time frame. Everybody's working in pharmaceutical industry knows. No drug is being developed in five years. This is not going to happen. But this is what you have to say to get this money. You're not selling dreams, you are selling lies. This is not going to happen. They are putting money everywhere, and they are just want to test. Is it going to work? It's not going to work. And so you have to find a lot of people putting money on the table. So you have multiple people coming here that have to decide what they are going to do all together. Multiple partners. And finally, mostly, they are speaking another language. Translation. 
We have been spending years and years trying to learn two languages, science and medicine, and we can make it because we can make people to communicate. But here you have a new actor that is supposed to speed the process, but this actor is not speaking the same language. They are living in another world. They don't care about our language. They don't try to understand our language. It's another world with other values. And this is the problem. And what's happening is this. Bubble Tower. Nobody is now speaking the same language. And you know what's happening? The project is killed. And it is not my story. It is a story of many of us. A lot of science, good science, that is never going to be able to be applied in patients because of this. What happened with my project? It was taken by another venture capitalist who put money, he sent it to the United States, saying that it would be much better taken by there. People not knowing what it was about, they took them like 14 years, making new indications, new work that was not working, that finally came back to where I was. And now it seems that it is working in another indications we had proposed. The same patient came back, and in the file, they found he had been treated by this treatment, by this device. So one of my colleagues called me and he said, could we use it for him again? No. I have no right to use it. It will not benefit from it. It will never approve in this indication because there is no market. And this is what it is. But I am persistent. And I did another story. I had another idea. I said, instead of going to a place where you need to have a lot of money, let's take a drug that is used for other indications, and then you use it for the eye indications. It took me a couple of years to get there, but it did work. And then you have nothing to do. You take this drug, you buy it in the pharmacy, it costs two euros per month. Great! And you can give it to a patient. It's not labeled, but it works. Believe it or not, I received a letter for the social insurance. This is not going to be reimbursed. And this is never going to be labeled, because nobody is going to make the experiments and the clinical trials to have it labeled, because there is no money to make here. And so, no money, go away. And this is what it is. We have to change the paradigm. We have to change the system, because there is a way to make it happen. We have to have money, we need the money from industry, we need the expertise, we need the money from venture capitalists, we need of this. But this must be regulated. The choice, the decision, the time must be regulated. Why? Because what's happening here is dramatic. It is dramatic for all of us that are working, doing good things, good science that are not going to be applied. It is dramatic mostly for the patients that are not going to benefit from all this good science that could have been used for them. This is translational research. We need to make it work to have ideas going from the patient to the lab, back to the patient. And we, doctors, must be the actors here. Because if we don't ask the question, who are going to be asking those questions? It's not scientists alone in their labs. It's not researchers in pharmaceutical industry where well, their research is constrained, it is us. And so also there is a, uh, the necessity to change the system and to make the possibility for all of us to be able to make the two, research and clinic, so that we're going to be able to make translational research. This is not new. Translational research is something very old, I can tell you. The oath of Maimonid, 12th century, his prayer was, give me the strength to make the good diagnosis and find the good treatments, but mostly give me the strength to never be satisfied and extend my, logic, my knowledge for the patients to discover new things. So I am a doctor, and I'm not going to make the choice, because we have no choice than make our dreams become reality. And I thank you.